<laughs> wow, that was pretty cool, and that guy's dang handsome. But some might say, not cool enough. You see, in that video, I promised you a steel bullwhip that wouldn't only break stuff, it would literally break the sound barrier. And I did not follow through on that promise. I blame Aria. You did the math, pretty boy. Well, all that changes today because we're headed back to the facility right now to do it right. Behold, my supersonic steel bullwhip. <laughs> oh, don't worry, it will look cooler when I whip it. And it's much longer than it looks, trust me. <laughs> now entering the facility. The bullwhip was likely the first human-made object to break the sound barrier. Before bullets, before rocket cars, before jets, and as we went through before, a whip can do this by taking advantage of a tapered shape and kinetic energy. So when you whip it, and whip it good, some wave of motion of kinetic energy travels down the whip, but because of that tapered shape, the mass of each part of the whip is decreasing. To keep the total amount of energy the same, ignoring friction and air resistance for a second, the corresponding velocity, according to the kinetic energy equation, has to go way up. And with a good whip crack, you can get that velocity pushed past 343 meters per second in regular air, which is the sound barrier and Mach 1. Now we went through all of this, but in the video I wasn't able to do that with a big steel whippy whip. And many of you sent me this video, so you know it's possible to do just that. I just didn't do it, okay? So today we will be going back, working with my weapons master, and getting it done. Getting the job done. But first, <laughs> we gotta go through some science. <clears throat> In the previous video, we talked about how to break the sound barrier with something like a whip, but not why breaking that barrier has any sound or boom associated with it. Well, let's start by visualizing sound waves. From a physics perspective, the air that you're breathing now actually acts like a fluid, and so you can imagine that any disturbance in that fluid will produce some ripples going outwards in all directions like throwing a pebble in a pond. This is just particles bumping into each other, and we call this bumping a moving pressure wave. These pressure waves travel at the speed of sound, by definition, in whatever medium that they're in. In air, where the particles are relatively far apart, that speed of sound is about 340 meters per second, over 700 miles per hour. If you get the particles closer together, like in water, the speed of sound is much, much faster, almost five times faster. And if you get the particles much, much closer together, like in a solid, like steel, the speed of sound is even faster still, almost four miles per second. Now, when these pressure waves emanate outwards, they eventually vibrate the air, which vibrates your eardrum or tympanic membrane. Your brain transduces these vibrations into electrical signals, and you interpret these electrical signals as sound. But what about all of this makes a sonic boom so special? As we said, sound waves in a medium can only travel at the speed of sound in that particular medium, a property of particle parameters. A sonic boom is loud because of this speed limit. Imagine an object starts moving and then makes a sound. Because the sound waves can only travel so fast, they will tend to get closer together in the direction of motion as the object gets closer and closer to the speed of sound itself. At or above the speed of sound, the sound waves can't get out of the way quick enough, and this is where you get a wave of concentrated pressure. This big wave of concentrated pressure is what creates the boom of a sonic boom. So you see, at the tip of a whip traveling faster than the speed of sound, the regular whipping noises get in effect amplified and turned into that characteristic crack. What's cracking, Kyle? <laughs> nice. Is the chain ready? Why else would I be calling? Oh yeah. I don't have any friends, so why would you be? Okay, I'll be right there. Can a calculator be a friend? I have those. Given that this iteration of the chain whip is going to involve Kyle swinging it around above his head, it seemed like a wise precaution to add a handle to help with his grip, as well as a little horizontal plate for extra finger protection. You can see that I added a little spine to the joint to enhance the structural integrity, and I chamfered all of the edges for extra finger safety. This whip is gonna be dangerous enough without having razor sharp edges as well. This chain is made up of mild steel, so the fabrication process consisted of some pretty straightforward cutting, grinding, and MIG welding to put this all together. 
I mean, that is, if you consider playing around with 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit straightforward. That's enough metal magic and sparks for now. Let's head back over to Science Thor and see how this thing really works. Okay, so what you'll notice during these attempts is this looks really dangerous. You can actually see it hit the wood here, which loses a lot of energy. I'm not getting what I want. Notice how I'm protecting both my hair and face. The former more so than the latter. I don't, it's the hair that's important. And this is the attempt I started thinking there was something going wrong. Watch the chain right here. Before it gets all the way to the end, it hits me directly in the back of the leg and then makes sparks on the ground. That hurt. Okay, something is going wrong. I, I don't know if I can fix this. Oh. Yeah, so here's the thing. Um, I wasn't actually able to get the chain to break the sound barrier. I know, I know, I know what the title says. Please don't click away. I, you'll get to see me hurt myself if you want to see that. And I want to go through kind of how experiments fail and what we can learn from them and what I think is actually going on here. So if you really want to see like the raw footage of what happened, uh, here you go. Yeah, that's not just emotional pain on my face, that's physical pain. As you can see here, I got a whip-shaped bruise going all the way around my leg where you see it get hit, even though I was wearing all the safety equipment that I could put on from Adam Savage's apron to uh, eye protection to face protection, all of that. I still got whipped in the leg a number of times and hurt myself pretty good, and I thought I was making the motion correctly, but it just did not work. But Cal, we sent you this guy cracking a steel chain whip a number of times than you kind of did in the previous video. What gives? Well, that's what I thought too, and I was looking back at what we did and the slow motion footage that Thea took. Why did this go wrong? Well, look at this TikTok footage a little bit closer. If you slow it down at just the right part, there, it looks like the rest of this shirtless dude's chain isn't actually chain. It looks like he has some sort of leather or other fabric whip on the end of his whip that would make it a more traditional whip and give it a great whip crack. Now, I tried to replicate the shape and the motion of this chain as best as I could, and even though you can see sparks fly when it hits the ground, I don't really get that pop, that sonic boom that I was looking for. I mean, look how many times I tried this. So yes, I wasn't able to get exactly what I wanted to get out of this video, but I still wanted to show it to you because so much of what you see online and in videos is so curated, so perfect, and sometimes so fake, I wanted to show you what failure looks like. I still got a very dangerous chain that could have whipped stuff up, but I wanted to stop to be safe, and I think there was other things going on, and when you see this failure happen, we can step back for a second, look at our own experiment, reevaluate what went wrong, what went right, was I whipping it right, was the chain the right length? I I want to show you that I failed at this. Even though it is theoretically possible, I wasn't able to do it. And I wouldn't advise you to do it either. Just because you see something on the internet does not mean it's easy, super possible, or safe. Just like in scientific papers on YouTube and other science videos, there is a success bias. 
There's a bias to show only the times where something was correct and spectacular and never show you the failures or the misses. I mean, yes, otherwise you don't get a bunch of views and make a bunch of money, but I wanted to salvage some part of this video and get to some kind of learning experience with it. So even though you didn't quite get what you were looking for, I hope you learned something. Until next time. I, I don't know what else to tell you, really. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially on a recognized research assistant, Sam Rachelson, and visiting scholar, Zalrock, entity of the ninth dimension. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape a silky white lab coat over your shoulders, if you want to continue this conversation on Discord, you want to see videos early, you want members only live streams, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. And as you can see, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Arya here each and every week. <laughs> There's literally hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass the t Okay, but seriously, uh, don't try this. Two things, really heavy, you can, you can, you can pull something, and two, uh, what you're not seeing in a lot of the videos of this, or in the footage that I'm showing you of this, is that uh, you kind of have to dodge the whip as it passes your feet. And uh, it's very heavy, and it hit my foot once, and good thing I was wearing shoes with soles that came up high enough, or else... Stay safe. Thanks for watching. What's up?